Hi everyone, Peter here from Flow High Performance, and in this video we will be covering how tracking our step count can be a useful tool for fat loss or to maintain a leaner body composition. First, let's quickly cover what exactly step counting is. Quite simply, step counting refers to tracking how many steps we perform per day. Traditionally, this was achieved using a pedometer, but new technology has made it easier and more accurate to count our steps. We now have phone applications, fitness bands, and smartwatches, which can easily track how many steps we perform per day. Many enthusiastic trainees, and even the general population, are using step trackers to monitor daily activity levels. However, a metric doesn't have much use if we don't know what it means, or how it can be used to help us with our body composition goals. So in this video, we will explore exactly this, how we can use our step count to help us lose weight or to help maintain a leaner body composition. To understand how our step count may influence body composition, we first need to explore the concept of energy expenditure. This is a very nuanced topic in itself, so we won't go into all the details in this video. However, let's cover the basics of energy expenditure and how it relates to step tracking. Essentially, we have four primary components of energy expenditure. These are the four ways in which we burn energy, which all contribute to the total amount of calories that we expend per day. However, not all components contribute to the same extent, and not all components can be manipulated to the same extent. The first and biggest component of energy expenditure is basal metabolic rate. This refers to the energy required for all essential bodily functions, like breathing, blood circulation, hormone regulation, and any other subconscious functions required for survival and health. This can be thought of as the amount of energy expended if we were to simply lay down in bed for 24 hours without moving or eating at all. According to most research, basal metabolic rate tends to account for around 70% of total daily energy expenditure in fairly sedentary people. Basal metabolic rate is determined mainly by total body weight and more pronouncedly by how much muscle we have. So we can't really make a big change to our basal metabolic rate in the short term, but if we increase body weight, especially if this is muscle mass, then our basal metabolic rate will increase. Next we have the thermic effect of food. This refers to the increase in energy expenditure that occurs from food intake, digestion and storage. It is estimated that this accounts for around 10% of total daily energy expenditure in fairly sedentary people. This will obviously be impacted by how much food we eat. If we eat in a calorie surplus, we will expend more total energy compared with the same person eating in a calorie deficit. Furthermore, protein intake seems to influence the thermic effect of food to some extent, with higher protein intakes resulting in slightly increased energy expenditure. However, this is only a very small increase in energy expenditure, and most people watching this video will probably already be consuming a high protein diet anyway. The third and fourth components of energy expenditure we will group together because they are similar in nature. These are non-exercise activity thermogenesis, or NEAT for short, and physical activity. Both of these components refer to energy expended through movement. NEAT generally refers to subconscious movement and activity, like walking around the house, fidgeting, head movements, and other movements we do throughout the day, which we aren't really aware of. Physical activity, on the other hand, refers to intentional exercise, like weight training, cardio, or sport practice. Because both NEAT and physical activity both essentially refer to movement and exercise, we can pretty much categorize them together for the sake of this video. For fairly sedentary people, NEAT accounts for around 15% of total daily energy expenditure, and physical activity contributes around 5%, providing a total of around 20%. However, most of the research on energy expenditure is conducted on fairly sedentary people, like we have mentioned. This refers to people who exercise very little, which is probably not as accurate for most trainees watching this video. We can increase NEAT or physical activity beyond this baseline sedentary range to increase energy expenditure. This is where we can have the biggest impact on total daily energy expenditure and where step counts come into play. So what step tracking can do is provide a way to quantify total daily activity levels, including both NEAT and intentional physical activity. While steps are not the only form of movement or exercise we perform throughout the day, it is the most prevalent for most people. So our step count can be a simple way to get a good general measurement of total daily activity levels. This means we can intentionally change our exercise or habitual routine to increase or decrease the amount of activity we do each day. 
By doing more steps per day, we are increasing our activity levels and expending more energy per day. This can help management and adherence to a calorie deficit or maintenance calories, which is the key variables for fat loss or weight maintenance. A major benefit of step counts are that they track both neat and intentional cardio. This is beneficial because quantifying cardio alone has some issues. Generally, when we perform more intentional cardio, we tend to actually decrease NEAT subconsciously. So even though we burned more energy doing exercise, we are likely to perform fewer steps and move less throughout the rest of the day. This would result in an overall lower amount of net energy expenditure than we would expect, despite the extra effort to do cardio. A benefit of step trackers is that they quantify the entire amount of physical activity performed throughout the day, so we can see exactly how much activity we are doing. So whether we perform intentional cardio or we increase NEAT through habitual daily tasks, step tracking will account for both forms of exercise. While step counts will account for the majority of exercise modalities, it doesn't account for everything. More specifically, we won't be able to track energy expenditure through cardio methods like cycling, rowing, or swimming. So if we were to perform such exercise, how would we consider it? Well, we could just count this cardio in addition to the steps we perform throughout the rest of the day. If these exercise modalities are fairly consistent, then it shouldn't be an issue. For example, let's say a trainee usually achieves around 10,000 steps per day. Twice per week, they go for a casual 45 minute cycle as a form of low intensity cardio, plus a slightly lower step count of 7,500 on these days. If this is consistent, then total energy expenditure throughout the week will still be relatively equivalent. So the question now becomes, how many steps should we perform per day? Unfortunately, there is no specific answer for everyone. Rather, this is more of an individual level question. Everyone will have different habitual daily step counts based on a number of different factors. This will be influenced by factors such as occupation, weather, walkability, accessibility, and much more. So some people will habitually have a higher step count, while others will have a habitually lower step count. Trainees can then make intentional decisions to increase or decrease step count based on their current activity levels and their goals. So next we need to assess our current trends in body weight over time. For this video, we will assume that our goal is to reduce body weight or maintain a lower body weight. So basically the goal is to increase energy expenditure to help us maintain a negative energy balance. Then once we assess our habitual activity and our trends in body weight, we can make changes to our step counts. Assuming we aim to increase our step count, it is recommended to implement very gradual increases over time, rather than attempting to drastically increase it too quickly. This gradual approach will help us develop healthy and sustainable habits that can be achieved with minimal effort over time. For example, let's say a trainee is fairly sedentary and habitually gets 5,000 steps per day without conscious effort. They are currently maintaining body weight, but want to lose weight to achieve a leaner body composition. So they have decided to increase this step count to lose some weight. They may now aim to increase this up to six or 7,000 steps per day through either walking more for transport or going for a short walk each day. Now they have increased their daily activity and are probably expending more total energy per day, which will help them be in a calorie deficit. After some time assessing this new daily step count, the trainee can then see how their weight is trending and adjust step count as required. This should be a constant recalibration process in conjunction with nutrition to achieve our desired body composition outcomes. To put some numbers on average step counts, let's cover some very general recommendations. A low daily step count would be less than around 5,000 steps per day. A moderate step count would be around 5,000 to 10,000 steps per day. A high step count would be around 10,000 to 15,000 per day. And a very high step count would be more than 15,000. So we know that weight can be lost with any number of steps per day because we can always compensate for this by eating less food to stay in a calorie deficit. However, the lower our activity levels are, the less total energy we will expend and the less food we will have to eat to be at maintenance or in a deficit. So for most of us aiming for fat loss or to maintain a leaner physique, we probably want to ensure we get a reasonably high step count. However, can steps ever become too high and actually inhibit weight loss? Well, the answer is no from a pure energetic standpoint, but yes from a practical perspective. A very high step count, above around 15,000 steps per day, is not going to prevent you from losing weight. 
However, unless this very high step count comes mainly from habitual activity, such as someone who has a physical job that requires lots of walking throughout the day, then it may simply be taking time and energy away from weight training. Maybe if we are getting to such high step counts each day, it is better to cap it there and rather perform more resistance training volume to assist with muscle growth rather than performing additional steps. Furthermore, a very high activity level may contribute to greater overall fatigue, which could potentially reduce the quality of our training sessions and result in a slightly inferior hypertrophic stimulus. So there is not necessarily a strict upper limit for step counts, it is more of a practical trade-off because we only have a finite amount of time and energy available to exercise each day. So to summarize this video, let's establish some practical recommendations. It is probably a good idea to maintain a fairly high daily step count to ensure daily energy expenditure is relatively high. This should make it more manageable to adhere consistently to an appropriate calorie balance, whether this be maintenance or a deficit. A minimum of around 7,500 or more preferably above 10,000 steps per day is recommended to assist with weight loss and long-term weight management. However, very high step counts, if they aren't habitual already, could potentially detract from resistance training from either a practical or physiological level. Ultimately, trainees should assess their own individual activity levels and current trends in body weight over time and make informed decisions based on such information. Thanks for watching and hopefully you got something out of this video. Check out flowhighperformance.com for online coaching, training templates, ebooks and more.